few things that narcissistic people seriously dread, fear happening to them. We're all human. We can all have some fears. A narcissistic person will go all out to make their worst nightmares become a reality for you. They are some of the most self-centered, hypocritical, self-entitled, exploitative, tive, envious people that you could ever meet. So one of the first things that a narcissist dreads is being rejected by somebody. You'll often notice with the narcissist, the very things that they dread, they will make come true for you. So because they dread being rejected, they will happily discard people to punish people, to hurt people for not giving them enough attention or when they perceive that that person might no longer be under the narcissist spell, might be waking up to the mind game. So because the narcissist is losing control, they'll discard that person and move on to a new source of supply before they believe that person can reject them. Narcissistic people seek that excessive validation from others. Now, people can seek validation from other people. We do have to learn to internalise our own validation rather than relying on other people. However, depending on certain stages of your life, sometimes you do need that external validation. With a narcissist, it's that excessive validation and the rejection cuts differently on a narcissist. Any disappointment, any disapproval, any criticism, any constructive feedback. If they do something for you and you don't give them the room, a right amount of praise for their efforts, they feel rejected. Not only this, a narcissistic person will sabotage you. So if they find out that you're trying to quit smoking, they'll take you somewhere where people are smoking. If you're one that likes to sit outside in the sun with a drink and a cigarette and you're trying to quit smoking, they'll take you outside with that drink. If you're trying to quit drinking, they'll take you to a pub. If you're trying to lose weight, they'll bake you a cake and then get offended when you do not want to eat the cake that they made and claim, don't ever ask me to do anything for you again, you're so selfish. So they, they set things up to cause you to reject them because they're trying to sabotage you. So if you, if you don't allow them to sabotage you, you've rejected them and then they take offence and they seek to punish you. Any disapproval, any criticism, any form of rejection is a significant threat to the narcissist's ego and undermines their self-idealised image. Failure. Failure is not particularly a nice thing and a lot of us aren't particularly taught how to handle failure in the right way and even when we're taught there's different ways that different people can handle failure. Most people internalise it and try to work through it and try to do better, do it a different way. I think it was Thomas Edison that invented the light bulb that said, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways it didn't work. So we we do have to have that shift in our mindset that benefits us, that propels us to keep going, depending on the individual person and the mindset that works for them. With a narcissist, their mindset is, they made me fail. If it wasn't for the fact that I had children, I'd be doing this. And they punish their own children for their failings. If it wasn't for my partner not giving me attention, I wouldn't have cheated. They punish their partners for them not being loyal. If the new supply wasn't so obsessed and if they'd have just left me alone, they punish their new supply for them not having the honesty and the respect and the loyalty 
they don't take responsibility for their failures. So they don't learn from them. However, they will happily point out everybody else's failures to cause those vulnerabilities and those insecurities, to get people to shut down and fear speaking up and then end up questioning themselves if they're a narcissist. Narcissistic people require achieving perfection. Now, we can all be perfectionists. However, general, genuine non-narcissistic perfectionists usually are hard on themselves. Narcissistic perfectionists are hard on other people. When they fail, it haunts them. It's a nightmare for them, which is why they shift the blame onto somebody else. Being ignored, being overlooked. Again, with a narcissist, the very things that hurt them, they will do to you, which is why many will deploy the silent treatment just because they didn't get their own way with you. Now, when you've had your feelings hurt by somebody, there's plenty of non-narcissistic people who shut down and can't communicate and just need a bit of breathing space because they don't want to react in a negative way. And it's about gaining that mutual understanding of each other, which genuine people can do with a narcissist. You're not going to gain that mutual understanding because they don't understand themselves and they do not want you to understand them. So it can be challenging when you are ignored or overlooked. However, again, genuine people usually internalise and what's wrong with me? What can I do to improve? Narcissistic people think there's something wrong with them. They're not paying me attention. I need to up my game a bit here to get the attention that I'm entitled to. Oh, they're still not paying me any attention. I'm going to punish them because they're wrong and I'm right. Narcissistic people get their self-worth, they get their validation from those around them. They're seeking that excessive attention. So when they don't get it, they hate it. It panics them. They believe they're losing their touch, which is why they will often open their level of games. They'll escalate their games to get that attention. And they can't tend to differentiate between that negative and positive attention. They prefer the positive attention, but if they can't get it, they will go all after the negative attention and then blame the other person for the negative attention. Losing control. Not only losing control of themselves in front of other people and losing the image that they're selling to those people because they need those people to be the fly monkeys and the enablers, but losing control of other people's minds, other people's minds. Now in life, we can all like that sense of certainty. So when we get, when we get thrown into that uncertainty, that can feel a bit like we're losing control. So things like if we suddenly lose our job, and then there's so many knock-on side effects. How are we going to afford our food? How are we going to afford this for our children? How are we going to be able to do this? So losing your job, which can be out of your hands for various reasons, can throw you into that uncertainty. It gives you that loss of control and you can dread things like this. This is normal. However, a narcissistic person will purposefully be arrogant when it comes to their work, make loads of mistakes, blame other people. And then when they lose their job, <laughs> they don't get it. it doesn't compute. They're like, well, it wasn't my fault. It was their fault. It was their fault. It was their fault. They don't like losing that control. And they have to pass the blame. They felt rejected. They've had that failure. They've been ignored. So they have to pass the blame onto somebody else and they're losing their sense of control over reality and over other people and they're going to cling on and crawl back any way they can to regain that sense of control that they desperately need. They need to remain dominant to manipulate and it stems from a deep desire to be superior to other people. So when they lose control this threatens and challenges the narcissist's carefully crafted facade of who they are as a person. When they lose control of another person's mind, they fear exposure. 
which is another thing that they dread. They don't particularly believe that they've done anything wrong, but they don't want people to look at them in a negative light because they perceive themselves as to be perfect. It's somebody else's fault, which is why they will go all out to smear somebody else's name because they wouldn't want theirs smearing even when you're telling the truth about them they will go all out to smear somebody else's name to protect their own often through projection by explaining everything the narcissist did to that other person but claiming the other person did it to them there are those in life who take responsibility for their behavior and there are those in life who pass responsibility over to anybody else and those who pass responsibility are the kinds of people you want to be avoiding because anything they do wrong, they're going to blame you. And if you're the kind of person who takes responsibility, you're going to be thrown into so much chaos and self-doubt and uncertainty that you're going to be the one that feels like you're losing control and going crazy due to the company you're keeping. Keeping. It's not that easy to recognise the first time you live through it. It's not that easy to recognise the second or the third. It takes seven attempts to get out of these kinds of relationships. However, once we do recognise it, we can learn from it and we can change direction. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please do add those into the comments for people reading through. There are plenty of things that narcissistic people dread. So any of you notice, please add in those into the comments also. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support of the channel is greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to or have partners with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. I do also have a couple of books out on Amazon, a narcissist handbook which is the ultimate guide to understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse and 15 rules to deal with narcissistic people if you cannot go no contact. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.